This series is a spin-off of the American show The Walking Dead. Many fans have raised questions about why some people turn into zombies even if they haven't been bitten. In the show's setting, the zombie virus is transmitted through the air. Everyone carries the virus, and it only takes control of a person's body and turns them into a zombie when the host dies. Being bitten by zombies accelerates the process of infection. In the previous episode, the farm was completely destroyed by zombies. But Madison's family managed to escape once again. Now they are preparing to head to the meeting point agreed upon with Daniel. The father-daughter relationship between Ophelia and Daniel should pose no problems when joining the damn community. Lee, sitting in the back of the car, suddenly notices something unusual about Ophelia. He quickly taps the car to signal Kalataka to stop. However, Ophelia collapses on the road. Stop the truck! Ah! Did you hit your head? Let me see. Ophelia insists she's fine and just lost her balance. They all fall silent for a moment because the wound on her is clearly a bite mark left by a zombie. A sense of sorrow spreads among them. Ophelia makes a request to Madison. I want you to take me to my father. You hear me? Give me your word, Madison. I will. I promise. They soon arrive at the trading center. But those with wounds are not allowed in and may even be executed on the spot. Madison quickly helps Ophelia change into new clothes. They quickly arrived at the security checkpoint and naturally surrendered their weapons. Ophelia had to endure the pain during the inspection for fear of being found out. They enter the same small room as before, but Daniel won't arrive for another six hours. It's uncertain whether Ophelia can hold on until then. Victor is a realist, and he blames Madison for bringing Ophelia along and wasting their entrance fee. If Daniel finds out that his daughter has become a zombie, he might kill them all. Angels are all dead, and so is Ophelia. Your word isn't worth a damn whether or not she makes another hour or two. The only thing worth anything anymore are resources, and you keep squandering what little we've got. You expect charity from a butcher, he will not offer you that. Are you afraid of him? Is that it? Fine. We'll wait and see what Daniel does when you show up to pay for water you don't need with a dead daughter and empty hands. By the end of the night the time for trading had finally arrived and thankfully Ophelia had held out until now. Sitting on the steps of the trading place, Ophelia felt the cold. But Daniel was nowhere to be seen. After a while, a car arrives, but Ophelia has already lost consciousness. No, 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 please, Ophelia. Madison chooses to face Daniel alone. Just listen for a minute. Ophelia. Ophelia. What kind of sick joke is this? What happened? Answer me! Daniel, no. She saved us, but she got bit. I'm so sorry. Get away from us, or I kill you. Perhaps making Daniel believe his daughter was already dead in the first place was the best course of action. Giving him hope and then shattering it is undoubtedly the most painful. He must now deal with his own mutated daughter. To be honest, in the apocalypse, people like Victor are the ones who are most likely to survive. He can betray anything for his own benefit. Something that he wants. Something that I can give him. He's gonna want to hear this. Living without hope in a post-apocalyptic world is the worst. After the destruction of the farm, Alicia no longer believes in the existence of an absolutely safe place. She's grown weary of constantly searching for the next survival base. Saying goodbye to her mother, Alicia sets out alone to find the meaning of life. Nick, as the older brother, doesn't feel comfortable with Alicia. So he takes his best friend, Troy, and follows her. Alicia stuck to her guns despite Nick's urging. She said, I know you're at the dam. I'll find you when I figure it out. Nick and Troy have no choice but to head to the trading center and reunite with their mother. In a post-apocalyptic trading center, Nick showed Troy what insanity was all about and opened up a whole new world for Troy. Nick manages to procure two pills that can provide an exhilarating high. Initially resistant, Troy eventually gives in to Nick's persistent requests and takes one. Nick didn't think it was enough, so he asked around and found another great place. They then enter a bar that seems like a haven for addicts, a place where Nick feels right at home. He approaches the bartender, L, inquiring about anything that could make him feel even more exhilarated. L presents an array of drugs, but Nick declines, fully aware of the agony that addiction can bring. L had to bring out the shop's best asset, 
which was a bottle with a greenish glowing light. Then he took two pieces of zombie's brainstem with a spoon. Mick didn't realize that the zombie's brainstems could be used in such a way and got excited. Troy, although perverted, had a hard time accepting it and kept urging Nick to leave. Mick consumes the brainstem without hesitation. Troy was in a dilemma, but he ate it in one gulp. After eating the brainstem, Mick became even more crazy and took Troy over the fence. This scared Troy a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the two of them were already feeling a little high. The next thing is even more subversive to Troy's knowledge. There were already a bunch of zombies on the street, but Nick didn't panic. Wipe it on thick as much as you can. Then Nick rushed towards the zombies. The zombies didn't seem to feel their presence, and Troy was stunned. The following day, Madison at the trading center is preparing to gather her belongings when Daniel arrives. He said he carried his daughter on his back all night and then buried her under an olive tree. Daniel is a resolute and composed individual who understands that Madison is not to blame for what happened. He acknowledges that Madison was there for Ophelia in her final moments. Daniel formally invites Madison to join them at the dam and allows her to bring along the others. However, Nick informs his mother that he wants to stay for a while longer, unwilling to let go of the intoxicating lifestyle. The next day, while drinking, Troy observes a peculiar scene at the trading center. People are organizing boats and equipment. Approaching one of them, Troy strikes up a conversation. Fun's over. What the hell? Been talking to some people and these proctors. They got big plans. They're planning to attack the dam. Your mother's in trouble, Nick. Come on. When driving, Never look around too much, or else. Alicia was immediately hit by the shockwave and felt dizzy. Diana realized they were under attack and urged Alicia to quickly exit the vehicle. As expected, five or six burly men emerged from another car. Diana's fighting prowess was so impressive, she took down a man in three tries. However, Alicia ultimately couldn't bring herself to kill anyone and resorted to firing her gun to scare them off. Diana had suffered a severe leg injury, and all they could do was perform emergency first aid. Meanwhile, the commotion had attracted nearby zombies. In the end, Alicia and Diana were rescued by a man who happened to pass by. This man turned out to be a doctor who praised Alicia's proficient first aid skills. After tending to Diana's injuries, the doctor said, I need an assistant. He then took Alicia to a room where they met a man sitting in a wheelchair. It was evident that this man was the leader of this place. In fact, he was the mastermind behind the trading center. Proctor John, Proctor revealed that he had once been a small-time thug, but the apocalypse presented him with an opportunity. An unfortunate accident had left his spine misaligned, and he needed surgery to correct it. The success of the surgery would benefit everyone, but if it failed, everyone in the room would die. Alicia has no choice now. The surgery will begin soon. Proctor's a tough guy. 2. He'll operate without anesthetic. Alicia's role was to engage Proctor in conversation to divert his attention. The doctor began making incisions into Proctor's skin. And as he winced in pain, Alicia quickly started a conversation, even holding his hand to provide comfort. Alicia's unique conversational skills began to endear her to Proctor, who started liking her more and more. Fortunately, the surgery was successful and Proctor regained sensation in his legs. Proctor now had a great appreciation for Alicia's performance and expressed his desire to keep her by his side. At that moment, one of his henchmen entered the room to report that everything was prepared for the attack on the dam. On the other side, Troy and Nick inadvertently overheard news of the trading center's plans to attack the dam. They rushed to the reservoir to inform everyone. Lola suspected Proctor's intentions. He surely aimed to control the dam and exploit its people. Ultimately, Daniel decided to resist Proctor's plans. While Madison believed in preparing for both scenarios, they rigged the area around the dam with explosives. Victor located Nick and admitted to betraying the dam, with the intent of becoming its controller. Originally, Victor's plan was to open the gates to allow Proctor's men to peacefully take over the dam. However, Nick and Troy disrupted this plan. Victor urgently instructed Nick to take Madison and flee because the people at the trading center were ruthless, and time was running out. Victor remained unfazed by Nick's taunts, just as Madison and Troy were setting up the explosives. Nick also arrived at the scene. Yeah. We gotta get out of here. 
Okay, Strand sold out Daniel and Lola to the Proctors. We have to warn them. No. No, Victor brought this on himself. He should have come to me. We can't, because if Daniel sees Troy, he'll kill him. Why would Daniel want to kill Troy? I led the horde to the ranch. Madison now realizes that Troy was responsible for the tragedy at the farm, and that it was her kindness that stopped Kalataka from killing Troy. I'd do it all again. <laughs> Troy was dead, Nick didn't seem to know the mother, and his best friend was just fucked.